Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special bulletin. The Acolyte is three episodes in, five episodes to go. The latest attempt that Disney has made to bring in the modern audience and succeeding in doing nothing more than bastardizing any any of the lore that has came before it, stealing stories from the expanded universe and butchering them, mutilating them, into whatever nonsense they want. And of course, the fans have spoken quite loudly. The critics have shilled quite expectantly, and the usual suspects are running damage control over and over again. And the latest example of this is from the oh-so-wonderful Inverse with their lovely article, It's Their Opinion. And well, we all know about opinions. The Acolyte isn't ruining Star Wars. You are, you filthy, nasty, naughty, istophobic bigot who just can't stand anything. You can't stand any any Star Wars project with a strong female character or anything created by the lesbian, lesbian headlamp. But heaven forbid it could have anything to do whatsoever with the non-stop nonsensical plot contrivance, nonsensical writing, piss-poor writing, poor-looking sets, and just flat, dull, boring delivery and boring, boring stories. God, boring stories. But... Lucasfilm's latest series in the franchise is most promising yet. I think we were watching different shows, but fans are too blinded by their hate. Well, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, and hate leads to the dark side. Oh, prequel trilogy, how we, we treated you so poorly. My goodness, no one hates Star Wars more than those who claim to be Star Wars fans. Ah, yes, the tried and true defense of the nonsensical drivel that is coming out of Disney Star Wars. No one hates Star Wars more than fans, more than Star Wars fans. And this is something that these individuals, people who are writing these stories, writing these articles, do not seem to understand. And eventually, I'm going to get to what's going to happen. Fans who love an IP, in this case Star Wars, will argue back and forth, left and right, when they are still passionate about the story, the franchise, the lore, the world that was created, the world from our childhood. The passion drives us to argue and watch and criticize. So no, we do not hate Star Wars. We hate the nonsense that is coming out of Disney, the direction that we see it going. And Kathleen Kennedy's The Force is Female. George Lucas said, May the Force be with you. Thank you, as Kathleen Kennedy says, the Force is female. And Lesbian Headlamp says, the Force is lesbian. Because this is the level of inclusivity they are so interested in putting forward. Once the fans stop talking about your franchise, that's when there's a problem, because apathy will set in. And once apathy sets in, your franchise is doomed completely. That is the end. There is no coming back from that. Apathy is worse than anger, than criticism. But let's continue with this oh-so-lovely article that just loves the fans. Sure, the past few years have given the fandom plenty to critique. Oh, so you're admitting everything that all the stuff up until now has been shite. Because the Acolyte is a big, steaming pile of shite. The sequels splintered the fan base, because they were garbage, beyond recognition and Lucasfilm's efforts to expand the galaxy on the small screen, because it's a failure because they don't know how to do it, have been mixed at best. Well, you have a few people that like the first two seasons of Mandalorians and a resounding change in fan appreciation in season three. Andor was good, but there was the good Star Wars that nobody watched, unfortunately. Everything else... Uh, Ahsoka was... Mm. The better thing about Ahsoka, between Ahsoka and the Acolyte, for me personally, is there were a few characters in Ahsoka that I cared about. There were story beats, threads. There were story threads, ladies and gentlemen, that I actually was interested in when it came to Ahsoka. With the Acolyte, I, there's not one single character, although uh, Jedi Squid Game, I am, I don't know, interested in his character, but... He seems to be the only one putting forth any sort of actual effort in delivering his lines and actually emoting, but the rest of the cast, the rest of the characters in the story, it's just one... Just, it, I have no interest in these characters, and that's where this show is failing. Let's see. In some cases, criticism is inevitable. 
But again, so you're, okay, how can you sit there and go, it's the fans' fault, you're blinded by your hatred, but at the same time admit, in the first paragraph, that criticism is inevitable. Not everyone will find something to like in the franchise's recent output. More and more fans seem to be disliking the Acolyte with every single episode. The, the Rotten Tomatoes score, which I know we use Rotten Tomatoes mostly to point and laugh at, is not exactly the most dependable aggregate score website because, well, you get review bombing. Positive and negative. People that will go on there and voice their displeasure for anything and everything Disney Star Wars. It is expected. You have to weed through all the nonsense to find the actual criticism. And it's getting worse and worse with each passing episode. And we have five more to go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Jedi Torben may have had the right idea. At a certain point, the Discord reaches a fever pitch and even Lucasfilm's most promising projects... There's nothing promising about this project. My God, what are you on when you wrote this article? Oh, wait. You must shill for the great and powerful mouse. Must worship the house of mouse with anything, with any and every single breath until you are gone. Gotta keep on to that early access. Gotta, gotta keep that access. The Acolyte is not the first Star Wars project to face the brunt of fan backlash, which may be a trend. So you continue to blame the fans, and yet you, again, we're admitting that it's not the first project to face fan backlash. So what is the common denominator? You have more and more fans coming out. The number of fans criticizing these shows is getting larger and larger and larger with every single series, every single episode. And yet, we are the bad guys. Okay. Help make that make sense, ladies and gentlemen. But in the new live-action series, it is also one of the best additions to the galaxy far, far away in a long time, embracing decades of nostalgia. Oh, jangling keys. What? What nostalgia? There is no nostalgia in this. It's good. We're trying to rename the Force because, yes, the, oh, what, the coven of witches were able to create life where no other entity in the universe could. George Lucas did this in episode one. You copied his homework and made it worse. Oh, while also thinking critically on franchise's legacy. It also might be the most diverse... No. Oh, we're going to praise the show for diversity. We're going to praise the show for diversity and nostalgia instead of talking about the writing, talking about the characters, and this is why you fail. Because that's all you care about. That's all the writers care about. That's all the showrunner, lesbian headlamp, former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, gives a toss about. Is my diversity, inclusion, and equity. That's all that matters. Oh, yes, queen. If that's all that matters, is that the only thing that you are talking about on your press tours, on your announcements and discussions and all these videos? The Star Wars is lesbian, the fans are gay, and all this other stuff. And then talk about C-3PO. If you're not even talking about your own show, the world, the lore, the characters, the story. Let's talk about my diversity and inclusion. That is a sign that it's going to be nothing more than a steaming pile of Triceratus shit. Ha. Huh. Let's see. The most diverse Star Wars story yet, because that's all you have. Diversity. Even though there was diversity in so many stories before this. But you choose to ignore it and insult it and sweep it under the rug. <sighs> Exasperation of frustration. And while that's definitely a boon for marginalized fans, buzzword, buzzword, buzzwords, it's made the acolyte the target of vocal splinter of the fandom. Yes, the diversity is the problem. That's what the fans... That's what the fans are targeting. The diversity, the inclusion, the equity. Of course it is. Not that you had a campfire on the outside of a spaceship in space. We're not criticizing that. That's okay, because explosions in space. We're not going to criticize the fact that you let a suspect, someone suspected of killing a Jedi, onto a prison transport ship with absolutely no Jedi escorts and one single robot guard. No problem with that whatsoever. My goodness, how many contrivances can you have in one single episode? And of course, Jedi Torben. Well, what happened to him? Well, he's just going to off himself, self-checkout, after... He when he could have done it the first instance, let May, but whatever. This is the fantastic writing, but no, it is the diversity and the, that the Star Wars criticism the fans are criticizing, right? Okay, 
Let's keep going. Oh, not to mention the Jedi Trinity. Just let's let's may beat everybody up. Oh, let's go open. Oh, this is the good writing they're talking about. The assassin enters the bar to confront Jedi Trinity and announces to everyone sitting at the table in broad daylight, middle of the day, with all kinds of witnesses, trained assassin. Oh, fight me with all, attack me with all your strength. This is the level of writing that is becoming acceptable for the Star Wars franchise, but any criticism whatsoever can only be because the showrunner is a lesbian, the main characters are women of color, marginalized, marginalized, marginalized. Whether you know them as the fandom menace, oh my goodness, you're actually using that in a serious manner, or a cluster of blue checkmark users on Twitter, because all of a sudden the blue checkmark on Twitter is a bad thing. Wow, how, how we have switched. It's impossible to escape their orbit. Maybe it's because more and more fans are seeing this for the shit that it is. The same folks that review bombed, because heaven forbid, it just can't be garbage. Review bombed diverse swings like Marvel's Eternals. Ah, it was about as entertaining as a plank of wood. Or the Lord of the Rings prequel. <laughs> the Rings of Power another gem in writing, have now set their sights on the Acolyte. <sighs> Deflection, diversion, fan blaming when, heaven forbid, you actually see the forest for the trees, the bad writing for the bad writing, because that's what's being criticized. To hear them tell it, the series is the worst thing that's ever happened to Star Wars. And yes, it is. It's getting worse and worse. And its showrunner, Lesbian Headlamp, is just as fiendish as Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. Well, Kathleen Kennedy is the one that hired her, and she was the former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein. You make your own decisions. To them, the Acolyte's quote agenda. You know what? I couldn't care less about what, or, what sort of ideological nonsense that the Acolyte is trying to push or quote unquote woke. The article said it, not me. Checkbox hiring, checkbox casting, ideological writing, whatever you want to do it. The show is just bad. Poorly written, filled with plot contrivance. Things happened, why? Because plot. How did, how did Oshi get out of the cell? How did she know how to break out of a prison cell? Well, we needed her to because plot. That's just... That's what's acceptable in Disney Star Wars. It's ruining Star Wars. Oh my God, it's something to be feared. It's poisoning pop culture itself. No, articles like this is poisoning pop culture, poisoning the well. Nonsensical writing like the Acolyte is what's poisoning it. It's turning fans away. It's turning fans' passion and criticism of shows like the Acolyte into apathy. More and more fans are walking away and the difficulty to get them to return will be a mountain Disney will not be able to get over. We realize how ridiculous that all of that sounds, right? Like, much like your article. God, I hope so. But if not, let's try this. The Acolyte is not actually ruining Star Wars, but the bigoted backlash. Oh my goodness, the bigoted backlash. Here we get to the crux of the article. Is definitely ruining the fun for everyone else. If someone else running their mouth that you can act actively avoid watching and listening to is ruining your enjoyment for a TV show, then that's a you problem, boys and girls. Not a content creator's problem. It's not the fan's problem. If you are still a fan of this stuff, by all means, enjoy it. Love it. Talk about it to your friends. Tell everyone what is good about it. That's the key. Because Individuals like myself can sit there and go on three-hour live streams, 30-minute videos, 20-minute videos, whatever. Get on X and talk about it. But I'll sit here and explain to you, bit by bit, the individual scenes, the things that I didn't like about it, why I didn't like about it, but the criticism that we get, the backlash that we get when we criticize the beloved House of Mouse and any of their products is, you just don't like it because you hate it. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. And they're all nonsensical because all of these individuals cannot tell you specifically what they liked about it. Oh, it was fun. Oh, he vadered. Oh my goodness, it's red. These are not reasons to like a show. These are not reasons. These are not things that will save a franchise. 
It's the writing. It's the characters. It's the atmosphere. It's the score of each episode. The quality, not the quantity. Challenge to anyone out there that actually likes what's coming out of Disney Star Wars. Scream it to the hills. Tell everyone what you liked, specifically beat by beat, scene by scene. Tell us what was good about it. Not just that it was fun. This is Star Wars. Tell us why it was Star Wars. Tell us why it was fun. Try that on for size and maybe you would gain some credibility instead of going, oh, Ooh, oh, wow, oh, ee, and having the crocodile tears when someone comes on screen or what? Uh, just let's continue with the article. The outright shocking. It's not outright shocking to see something like the Acolyte marred by racist, misogynist, and even anti-LGBTQ black backlash. You notice they're not providing any receipts whatsoever in this article, which the thing is, individuals like myself and criticism of this can provide receipt after receipt after receipt. Videos of Lesbian Headlamp, former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, talking about what they want to do because Star Wars is gay, the fans are gay, and these idiots with their nonsensical, ideologically driven, buzzword-filled speeches that mean absolutely nothing to the story they're trying to push. The story they're trying to get out. The story of the Acolyte. They can't even talk about their show and what's good about it. Star Wars devotees would share multiple bad faith treatises, prove it, show your receipts, or shut um, about the series on YouTube, or tank its audience score. There's just as many people giving zero ones and zeros as there are giving tens that have not watched five minutes of the show. It's just par for the course. Par the course. Par the course. Par for the course. Editing, proofreading, keep going. It's just par for the course at this point that this is, after all, the same fandom that launched consistent attacks against actors like John Boyega, flat out lie. John Boyega was the most promising thing that came out of The Force Awakens, and all they did was turn him into a joke. And Disney is the ones that minimized his face on the poster, but we don't like to talk about that. You want know, to talk about the backlash against Daisy Ridley? There was no backlash against Daisy Ridley. People actually don't have a problem with her. And she even came out in an interview and said she doesn't have a problem with the fans. Trying to make the, the claims that even Kelly Marie Tran, she fled social media because of the fans. I uh, believe that's false as well. Oh, and Ewan McGregor, who came out, who came out concerning Reva who got some nasty little messages on Twitter. Welcome to Hollywood and welcome to social media. Her character was trash. Moses Ingram, I don't know anything about the woman. I'm sure she's a fine individual. However, Reva in Obi-Wan was a steaming pile of warm Triceratops shite. But if you say that, you are obviously racist because, well, Moses Ingram is black. And a woman. So you are a misogynist, bigot, racist, pig, if you criticize a fictional character and their writing. But okay. The problem is that nothing has changed. You are absolutely correct. Nothing has absolutely changed. Nothing has changed coming out of Disney Star Wars. It's nonstop garbage after nonstop garbage, and it's getting worse and worse. And the Normie fans are starting to see it, not just the fandom menace because it takes a lot more than just a few people on youtube to downvote a trailer downvote a video this little small minority of vocal voices that the usual suspects are always calling out they don't exist it's the silent majority that is walking away from these franchises because of the piss poor stories that disney's pushing out Nothing has changed in the 10 years since this vocal minority. I legitimately didn't even see that part of the article. But again, it's par for the course for these shill websites running damage control. They use the same words over and over and over again, despite how many times the criticism towards these shows is about specific story beats, specific directions that they're going, why we dislike these things, and yet we are the vocal minority suddenly cried out against diverse casting. We don't care about diverse casting, we care about good stories, and Disney Star Wars has not been putting out good stories. 
more nuanced storytelling. Oh, you actually want to admit it, that we're looking for better storytelling. Wow. They've yet to actually learn their lesson. True, Disney has yet to actively learn their lesson. Oh, wait, she's talking about us. Ah, their arguments are bleeding into even the casual discourse surrounding the Acolyte. Do you actually think that people come to channels like mine and EFAP and Critical Drinker and see what we have to say about it and that makes them dislike these shows? That's what they actually believe, and I find it astounding, and that's not the case. Because what ends up happening is they'll watch a show and go, this wasn't all that great. Why didn't I like it? And they'll go jump on YouTube and find individuals like, again, me, Critical Drinker, EFAP, the like. And they'll watch their review of it and go, oh, okay, wow, they're actually right. And they'll relate to some of the criticisms that they have. And they'll go watch the next episode. And then they'll go watch the review. And after a while, when their personal opinion of the episode starts to line up with similarities a few similarities here and there when they start to line up they'll stop watching the show and just watch the individuals reviewing them that's happening more and more every single day they actually haven't learned their lessons bleeding over into casual discourse surrounding the act like comments on set design and screenwriting have turned into misogynist microaggressions buzzword 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 against lesbian headlamp even critiques on the series have been weaponized by its haters how how do you weaponize a criticism exactly? No room for nuance when it comes to the Acolyte because there is no nuance. There's nothing there. It's, it's obvious plot points, overused tropes, but, you know, it's, oh no, they created twins from using the Force. Yeah, George Lucas did that in episode one. It was dumb then, it's dumb now. You either stand with the series, flaws and all, or you're irrevocably against it. Flaws and all. I'll give them one thing. They're admitting the show has flaws, although it has a mountain of flaws. Origins of the toxicity aren't difficult to figure out. Of course they're not, because, you know, you have the answers even though you have no proof. Entitlement at the end of the day. Holy jeez. Projection. Thy name is inverse. Many male fans feel like their own fr they own the franchise. No, they just would like some good storytelling. If you're not, in case you have forgotten, Princess Leia Organa was a beloved character in the original trilogy. Princess Leia Organa was a, an actual strong female character. She was a leader. She was the leader of the resistance, the rebellion, a general in the rebellion. She stood up to the big bad Darth Vader after he had just killed someone had no fear in the face of certain death. And through all that, a beloved character, a well-written character. But you choose to ignore the male fan's love for her and her story and her performance because you have a narrative to push. And that narrative is falling apart day by day, and you just don't know what to do about it. My goodness. Many male fans feel the blah, 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 blah. Ah, challenge that ownership. That makes it hard for disparate groups to coexist. No one is telling you you can't be a fan. We're simply wondering how you can be a fan when you get the writing that you get praising this nonsense. It's even harder. Oh, God, here we go again. Buzzword. <sighs> okay, I'm going to try to get through this. It's even harder for non-white, non-male creatives hoping to tell stories within these franchises. Just tell good stories. We don't care what's between your legs. We don't care about the color of your skin. We don't care. Make a good story. That's it. What is so difficult a concept to understand about that? Truly. It's not like it's anything we've been saying. That It's not anything new we've been saying. What began as a relatively niche issue has become Lucasfilm's biggest hurdle to move forward. Yes, the bad writing. The Acolyte can weather the storm. No, no, no. It's been well received by critics. So, who cares? Critics aren't paying the bills. Critics aren't paying for a Disney Plus subscription. Critics aren't the ones talking about it. Talking about the pros and the cons, the flaws. Talking about... Critics aren't the ones talking about how... This scene could have been better if you'd have done this. 
So, no, like, if you care about what the actual critics, the button paid for shield critics, with access and their scores are, if that's all that matters to you, I will question your taste in writing and entertainment. Oh, okay. Act like in Weatherstorm, but what about the fandom and its relationship with those guiding the franchise now? We hate them. We do not like the direction that the, that the Star Wars franchise is going. As the discourse spirals out of control, it's getting harder to ignore it outright. Ah, there's no easy way out, but something has to change. Yes, like the people responsible for writing Star Wars. Otherwise, this... They keep using this word... You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comments. Who's ruining Star Wars? Is it the fans? Is it the apathy? Is it the... Head of Lucasfilm? Former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein? Who's ruining Star Wars? Is it you? Is it me? Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like, leave a dislike. Do all those different things as YouTube is making it do. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.